Alrighty guys, welcome back for part 5 of the endgame, or part 15 if you're following the whole walkthrough for this particular season of PoE. So, we're really going to try to upgrade every single piece of gear. What we're trying to set up for right now is doing these endgame bosses, and they are quite difficult. Uh, so you're going to need to basically get all of your gems if you can. Just keep on doing maps until you just get them all level 20, quality up every single thing that you can. If you can't afford awakened gems, they are a little bit better in a lot of different ways. Depending on your build, some of these can be big improvements. But we really need to max out a lot of things, and one of you guys came in and actually asked me, and I'm always here to help you guys. You guys can feel free to comment or ask me on Twitch while I'm streaming, how do we get the quality and um, have these flasks on auto? So this is going to be for like every single build. This is what you're going to want to know, but I'll also go over the pieces of the gear relatively quick in this video uh, for the things that you want to when you, you are setting up to fight these final bosses of the game. We're talking about the Guardians, Shaper, Elder Guardians, as well as doing Cirrus. So pretty much what it comes down to is you want to get everything upgraded. That is using the whetstones on your weapons as well as using armor scraps on every single piece. What this is going to do is increase the armor by 20% or maybe energy shield or evasion rating. You want to quality up every single piece of gear that you can because that's just going to give you extra free stats and it's like these things are basically free at this point. Like maybe like one chaos orb, two or chaos orbs on like every single piece will get them maxed out. These are very cheap, easy ways to get extra uh, defenses on your character or offensive stats if you're using whetstones. The next thing you want to do is really quality up all of your flasks. In most cases, what it's going to do is increase the duration, but there are technically some more uh, weirder exceptions of certain flasks. Here are the flasks that I'm currently running. So I'm running Forbidden Taste. Uh, I'm running a Jade Flask. Um, you might not need this one in every single build. Um, almost every single build can benefit off of Rumi's Concoction, though. It just grants you armor, so that's like damage reduction. Uh, but on top of that, you get Block, which is great for most characters as well, unless you like are for whatever reason, don't want block. Um, Onslaught is going to be able to increase your move speed as well as attack and cast speed, but we're only really benefiting off of at the move speed with this particular build. And then I'm running a Quicksilver Flask. A lot of people may want to run Immunity to Corrupted Blood and Remove Bleed. That's an excellent modifier as well. And you can get these flasks by buying them off players or just trading them, or you can just get any flask and start rolling random things on it. You can use these alterations and just spam them until you get like Immunity to Curses or whatever you need to remove um, if you want to. But I'm technically ailment immune like i'm immune to all of the like freezing i'm immune to getting shocked as well as ignited those are like the main ones that you want to be immune to uh if you don't have it on your build you're going to want it on your flask uh because some of these bosses they will freeze you and you will just die instantly if they freeze you yeah the bosses hit really hard there's a lot of mechanics where if you do not dodge them you will also die in one hit so you're going to want to quality up all your flasks. This will just help you out in maps, but it also can help out in bosses. So to quality them up, you can use a glass blower's bobble. Um, if it is a white one, you'll get 5% on every single one. However, if it's a unique, which I'm actually upgrading my Rumi's Concoction right now from this one over here to this one. The difference is it gives me 1% more chance to block. And it literally costs 10 times the amount of the price. Like this is like a 5 Chaos Orb, but you might having to spend like 50 Chaos Orbs just to get all the stats to be perfect. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and throw in the glass blower's bobble. Since it's unique, I have to do it this way to get max quality. Um, then if we want these on auto cast, because one of you guys asked me about this, uh, is how do we get these to like use when charges reach full? So you just go to your crafting bench. Remember, you can just add your crafting bench uh, in the decorations. You can just add your crafting bench to your hideout. That's how you uh, place it on the crafting bench. But we're going to take our a flask. We're going to put it in here and we're going to type in if you don't have this unlocked, you may have to unlock it by just playing the game. You'll just click on certain things or just play the game. You'll eventually unlock these. Um, we want, with this one in particular, we want to be using it when charges reach full. I'll move my face out of the way just for a second so you guys can see it. Use when charges reach full. That's going to cost five glass blowers baubles as well as five in stealing orbs. Again, you can trade these from players at the moment. These are a lot cheaper. In the start of the league, these can be like two chaos a piece, but at this point, they're a lot cheaper now. So that's what it's going to cost us. Uh, keep in mind, you can use it whenever you want. Like you can get a flask that says um, use when you become frozen and then it, it removes uh, freeze if you want to. But I like my things on all auto, so it just makes it super easy. So I never really have to do anything. And so now I've swapped this out. You really want to min max all of of your defenses especially for these bosses because a lot of times you will absolutely get destroyed if you don't meet these requirements heck i've been playing this game for a really long time and a lot of uh bosses can still just instantly get you so um one thing that you really want to look at is getting armor 
Uh, for our build, we want armor, uh, but you also can look at evasion rating depending on your build. Now, with my build, I decided to opt to hybrid out. Now, it can be expensive to do this earlier on, uh, but what you're going to look for is specifically stuff that has uh, socketed gems have increased reservation efficiency. This can be on your um, shield, in our case. Uh, however, you can also get increased mana reservation efficiency on your helmet. I actually crafted this for relatively cheap. Um, you can also use the Eldritch currency, which are the little like uh, red, and let me go ahead and show you guys. You can also use these uh, currencies. One of them, uh, specifically the Eater of Worlds, that's the blue one, that's going to be giving us increased mana reservation efficiency. So how I'm playing this build is I'm going to max out on getting multiple different sources of defensive mechanics. Keep in mind, this is all just a uh, knowledge thing for most people because you may not want to scale all of these like I am, but the reason why I'm scaling all of them, specifically going into armor, block, and evasion, is because there are modifiers on the map where it says like players, um, if you click on like something, it'll be like you will take a lot more physical damage or it'll be like the physical damage reduction that you receive is like minus 100. And then that way, if I'm scaling evasion, I can rely off of getting ev evasion things where it's like, uh, for example, it's like reduction on evasion. Like I can roll both and that's gonna make our character extra, extra tanky. But we're really setting up for these bosses. So most of the bosses honestly have mechanics that will one shot you regardless, um, which you'll see very, very soon uh, in the gameplay. Like there's a Maven mechanic where you're just dead. If, if it hits you, it doesn't really matter your stats, you're dead. Um, so what I'm running right now is everyone needs to pretty much run Determination or Grace. Most builds will opt to run either one of these. There's also another one that can grant you Energy Shield, uh, but we don't have a huge scaling in Energy Shield for our build, so that's not gonna be something we're using. Um, Tempest uh, Shield is actually really great as well. So here are our current setups for Auras. We're running Zealotry, Determination, Tempest Shield, Grace, um, I'm just running Stone Golem. A lot of builds can benefit off of Stone Golem as well. And then I have some auras from my Animate Guardian, but even when I do the Feared, you'll see that I do not have this expensive um, Animate Guardian. But this Animate Guardian is really good. We'll talk more about that later because it requires Kingmaker, which can be kind of expensive. But what Kingmaker does is it grants us Fortification, um, and it's great. It's 10% damage reduction. But if you can't afford it, look into getting that as an upgrade for your Animate Guardian. But remember, if he dies, you lose all of your investment in all the gear that you put on him. But uh, in terms of our uh, pieces of gear just for this build, but I also will mention things for other builds because I want this to be like an end game build guide for every single uh, you know player of PoE. So this is what we're running for a wand. If you want to uh, look at it, feel free to go ahead and pause at any moment. Um, this is kind of expensive. At the moment, it can be anywhere from two to four exalts. Um, you're really looking for getting all spell skill gems and minion skill gems. And then you want trigger socketed spell when you use a skill with an eight second cooldown. Um, can be very pricey. I crafted mine for under one exalt. I got really lucky though. And, and you know, your mileage may vary, but you definitely want this. And if you do get it, life tap, desecrate and bone offering in, in this, it has to be in here because this is what's triggering it. And our helmet over here, just again, looking for life on pretty much every single piece of gear that you can. This goes for like all builds. Mana reservation efficiency is pretty much relevant in most builds as well because you want all, more auras equals more like bonus stats, right? Um, and here we're running Defiance Banner, we're running Cast When Damage Taken Support and Immortal Call, so I'm put this in the helmet over here. Sometimes you'll have to move around gems, then I'm running Animate Guardian still. Um, our amulet hasn't changed, in fact, I use this till the end game. I didn't even get my Ashes of the Stars, and uh, you can complete the game with basically a little bit less gear depending on your skill level so if if you feel like man this boss is super hard don't worry you can farm up you can get that one item and it will significantly increase your build um ash of the star is very expensive so um i'll be doing an updated like build guide for like end game because um as a beginner build i actually recommended that amulet the amulet has went up in price like four or five thousand times the amount and like th i know it sounds crazy but that amulet was just a few chaos now it's several exalts it's like 40 50 exalts so that is unrealistic for a beginner to get and i definitely want it but the thing is is that i'm not going to beat the game with an item that i cannot recommend uh players that are beginners to actually obtain right or crystallized omniscience like any of the builds that have those items as a beginner guide yeah you're basically not going to be getting those at least as of right now um because they're just super super rare for this particular season um or expansion so we're still running flush crafter six linking it uh we're running volley support pierce support awaken minion uh in fact you'll see a lot of the bosses i won't even have this this is an excellent addition though if you can't afford it it's a couple Couple exalts um, or you get a, like a low level one you can level up yourself but I just bought mine at max uh, we're still running summon skeletons the vol one 
Dispel Echo, increased critical damage support. Again, not every build's gonna run like these exact setups, but I'm just giving you guys the knowledge. Um, I like to get Cannot Be Ignited on a Ring, it just has a bunch of stats that I bought from One Chaos. Nothing too special with this. I'm running Sniper's Marks. So when you start doing these bosses, uh, specifically getting elemental penetration is going to be very huge if you're elemental or any type of physical damage mitigation um you can get where it like ignores um their physical resistance essentially um on our uh, shield over here you're really just looking for like recover life when you block don't worry about getting that increased reservation efficiency this one I bought for 50 chaos is probably a lot cheaper now because it's not armor based and like I said I wanted to scale multiple different sources of defensive stats just so I can actually be able to uh, do a lot of mechanics that are like either they subtract all your armor or they reduce your armor by a huge amount or they'll reduce your evasion rate and now since I'm scaling both um, I can have uh, both. Um, and then on top of that the brittle ground is going to be useful for every single build haven't even upgraded this 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 definitely needs to be upgraded then we got a uh, darkness and throne stage uh, and then we're throwing in some stuff for more damage more life this could be relevant on a lot of different builds as well um, and then we're running flame dash so some sort of mobility dash flame dash uh, leap slam this could all be great um, and remember you want to quality everything up you want to make sure everything is like max level when we're trying to do these end game bosses um, especially when we're going to be doing like the uber versions of these bosses for the feared this is the exact build i used to do the feared on which is like a bunch of uber bosses uh, all at once you can even do an uber variant of it uh, for like the maven like there's a lot of really tough stuff here but tempest shield very very excellent as well and summon stone golem on our uh, gloves just stat requirements extra life could be great this could be upgraded if we happen to get one of the eldritch currencies on specifically getting the increased minion damage you can get up to 50 percent minion damage with the implicit as well as the roll on um what is it the uh stuff it's a prefix it's a prefix that gives you increased minion damage so it's it's a huge boost in damage you also want to make sure that you are capped not only for like monsters because these monsters will be harder as you start progressing because some of these bosses have other monsters that they can spawn in um but you want to make sure you are resistance capped so that's 75 on at least every single resistance unless you're doing something weird and you're immune to, like a certain damage type because that can be available to be immune to chaos damage but um you want to make sure you're block capped now you notice that my block over here we have 37 and 44, but if I activate my uh, flask, I am maxed out. And that's okay. As long as you're able to kill things, uh, specifically the bosses, you may not have this up 100% of the time. But since there's a lot of mechanics with the boss. It doesn't care about your block chance. It doesn't care about your resistance. You're hit, you're dead. Um, and sometimes there's too many things going on, especially during the fear. That's one of the boss fights where it's literally just so many bosses at once that like... And, and also during the maven fight there can be bosses that spawn in that like it doesn't matter you're just going to get destroyed unless you can kill the boss fast enough and like my mentality has always been like you have six portals we're playing softcore if you can kill the boss at the end of the day that's okay you're still clearing out the content you still get the same amount of rewards all that happens is you lose xp which does suck as you progress it gets harder and harder to get xp but some boss fights uh, you know as a beginner and even for me i've been playing this game for a long time i still die on because there are literally times where it is impossible to be able to dodge multiple things because they just cover up too much of the screen especially with so many minions around and that kind of sucks for minion builds so eh, it's it's a thing but um uh, keep in mind you really want to get specifically resistance uh penetration so in our build we have uh minions ignore so this is going to be more so for other builds let me actually swap to another character um and i'll show you guys exactly what i'm talking about on like a different character because again i want this build guide to be for like end game and you really need to set up elemental penetration so on this character where's uh the uh, we have a dead eye here it is so on my dead eye i have uh triple curses um so let me go in and go to the hideout and i'll show you guys exactly what i'm talking about so you really want to get things that are going to uh stop your um boss because the, how the boss works is they do happen to have like some curse immunity as in like there's reduction effects on curses now again this can apply for melee builds it can apply for almost every single build except for if we're running that fleshcraft or chess piece that we have where like the minions ignore the elemental resistances, then getting elemental penetration does not matter. So in this instance, I'm running a specific helmet that lets me cast a spell. That spell is going to be tornado, but also hydrosphere. But what we're applying on this is getting sniper's mark as well as getting a frostbite. You can also get curse enemies with elemental weakness, frostbite, or whatever damage that you're dealing. In our case, we deal cold damage. So 
elemental weakness will apply for all of the elements. Or if you want to get um, a physical, uh, there's different ways to get physical. It's called vulnerability. But you want to look at penetration because a lot of these bosses will have an insane amount of elemental damage reduction or physical damage reduction, which you need to penetrate. Otherwise, you're going to lose out on a lot of damage. Other ways to get it. So Sniper's Mark over here just increased projectile damage. It's still technically a curse, but it's also a mark. You can only have one mark, but you can have multiple curses. But the curse uh, that's a mark also counts as a curse. We have triple curses available for us, and you can get that by getting something called um, Whispers of Doom on the tree. Uh, this, a lot of builds will actually anoint this, but you can also get, like, for example, these gloves where it says you can apply additional curse. You need to get this because it's going to significantly increase your boss damage because right here with Frostbite, we have cursed enemies have negative 43 cold resistance. Now, in bosses, it does not apply that negative 43. It actually has a reduced effect depending on the boss. Now, you'll have to look this up on the PoE wiki for, like, multiple different bosses, but... That's just how it works uh, with PoE. There's a lot of things that it doesn't explain. I, I originally when I was thinking, like, man, I could give him like negative 43 here, and then uh, also uh, um, elemental weakness will be, I believe, at a level one elemental weakness, but then has increased effect. Elemental weakness is just more negative resistance. We can actually go over here and check out the exact number because sometimes they update it. Uh, when you type in weakness, I believe it's going to be. Let's see. It is uh, so. It's minus 22, those resistances, but then you have 20%, so I guess that's like 22, right? Um, if my math's correct on that. But basically, that's what it's going to do. So you want elemental weakness, and then whatever element you're doing, or a vulnerability. Um, you can also use pride to increase your uh, physical damage. There's also impale to kind of scale that as well. Uh, but you really need to penetrate resistances. Another way you can get it is getting um, some type of penetration. So there is fire penetration support, there is cold penetration support, and there's also lightning penetration support. So you need to throw these in uh, for your boss fights. A lot of people will swap out a gem. Uh, in my case, my tornado shot does work with like, let's say greater multiple projectiles, but you take out something that you don't need uh, in your build for getting that cold pen. If you do not run it, again, the boss is just gonna feel like it just takes forever. It feels like you do no damage. So get that. Make sure again, you're qualitying up all your gems as an older character, but like you wanna quality them all up. And then once you quality them up, up. we can do this with this one actually so once you quality up all your gems uh, make sure your gem is level 20 when you do this but you can take a vault orb let me go to my uh, currency stash tab we can take a vault orb over here and we can hit it with a vault orb so what a vault orb will do is you can get negative stats too it can go down a level you can lose quality but once it's corrupted it's pretty much just kind of just messed up um, or you got it like messed up but in a good way so we can go to level 21 we can get 23 quality that's what I just showed you guys in the other video but we'll hit it with this one we lost level this is bad at this point, it's still usable though. I can level it up and it can be 2020, but it's not gonna be the best install. I can get a level 21 with 23 quality, but those are very expensive for a lot of the gems. Depending on the gem though, it could be very cheap. You can, some of these, you can get for just a couple chaos orbs, but you really need to look at elemental penetration for like all builds uh, because these boss fights will be very, 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 very difficult if you do not have elemental penetration or in our case, um, our minions have uh, ignore resistances. There is another um, uh, class which can actually ignore uh, elemental resistances on crit but that's what you're really trying to do and set this up um, there's going to be more gameplay i'm going to roll some gameplay of how uh, how to do the pantheon as well as some other things very soon uh, as well as how to craft some of these boots that i actually crafted um, as well as a unique uh, map that we'll go over very soon but you're basically just really trying to set up to get all of these bosses ready so we can do them and we're going to do that in the very next part we're going to be doing all of the extremely difficult end end game bosses another thing is you can quality up your amulet but it requires these catalysts. I had zero catalyst upgrades. They are nice, but um, it, it does help. Um, but these can be very pricey in the very beginning. So what this one does, there's several different ones. So this one actually increased the attribute modifiers, rings, amulets. So the attributes are kind of nice, right? So uh, over here, you see we have 24 decks instead of 23. So originally it had a certain amount and we increased it. Uh, so you can get a little bit of extra stats on all of your rings and amulets. You can actually do it on the belt as well, but not this one in particular because it doesn't have stats on it. But you can actually upgrade your uh, other things. But don't worry too much about the uh, amulet and belt like um, uh, rules for like the uh, catalyst, at least right now. But pretty much you're looking for, and also on your helmet if you can, whatever you're dealing damage with, whether it's like um, a, a cyclone or something, you can get an enchantment and purchase that. Um, some of these could be very expensive to craft off. We'll talk more about that 
uh, maybe in another video, uh, but for the most part, I just want to get you guys up to par and upgrading everything before these boss fights and get, you know, at least mention the flask and stuff because these bosses, again, penetration is kind of the key to fight these bosses. But anyways, let me cut to some other things that I do want to explain real quick. All right, guys, new gameplay mechanic. This is going to be the Pantheon. So you can go to Act 10 to talk to Sin. Uh, there are a bunch of ones that you will unlock through the campaign. You can also just open up the button by hitting my key is Y, but you can talk to him in Act 10. And you're going to be opening up the Pantheon. We're going to be selecting some of these as uh, basically new abilities. I'm going to move my face out of the way so you guys can read it. So you'll see that there are uh, s uh, these major gods and then there's a minor. You can pick one major and one minor uh, god for the power. So the one that I recommend most people get is Soul of Brian King. You'll see there are ones where it's in the white text where it says capture uh, Captain Claiborne. Under that, it's capture Peruna. Under that, it's capture Tanner Lightfoot. We're actually going to be doing one of them right now. Uh, so the, where it's in blue, that one I already actually unlocked, but this is how you actually unlock it. So you can uh, look up over on Google to see, like, for example, the one we're going to be doing for the gameplay is going to be the Soul of Abaroth. We're going to see where it says capture method the earth scorcher uh where that is not in like the text over there i don't have that unlocked yet because i actually have to unlock it so in order to find out which one i need to do i can just type in the capture soul of whatever it's going to tell me over here uh that it's going to be on the summit map so i already picked up a summit map so i already have one ready for you guys but that's how we actually capture it but we're going to need a device so how this works, and I'll throw my cam back on, now that I kind of explained, like, the one that you want is just look up the name where it says capture whatever, just type that in Google, like, Path of Exile, capture whatever boss, and then it'll tell you what map that you need to do it on. So we're gonna go back to the hideout, and we're gonna actually need two things. So we need the map that the boss spawns in on, and then we also need the Divine Vessel. Now, important thing, especially if you're also playing this as, like, my playthrough guide uh, here, we're gonna actually need to open up the atlas uh skills so if you have this one specced in already you're gonna have to unspec out of it temporarily because what this does is it makes it so your map uh cannot be modified by fragments and this counts as a fragment which is kind of weird they hopefully will patch this out but it does count right now so we're actually going to click on refund passes refund out of this one we're going to do all of them and make sure you do the frozen one in particular that's the most important one i just happened to do it before i decided to go ahead and show you guys the uh, thing but we are actually completely immune to being frozen that's actually one of the most important things uh in the game is getting immunity to frozen whether you get it this way or you can do it other ways you want cannot be frozen um, so we're going to do cannot be frozen and then we're going to do the one where we're immune to burning ground. There's also less duration of ignite. I'm actually completely immune to ignite freeze. Um, but we're also going to be doing, uh, the Tanner Lightfoot, which makes us, uh, reduce the effect of chill on us. I'm not going to show you guys gameplay of every single one that I'm getting, but th the idea still remains the same. So we need the map. So in our instance over here, we're going to be needing a summit map. So, uh, I'm going to go and throw my cam back on. Um, so we have the summit map here, but in addition to that, you need the divine vessel. How do you get a divine vessel? You can purchase it off of other players. It's about anywhere from one to three chaos orbs, um, or you can just find it as a drop. They're actually relatively like easy to get. You'll probably get some as you uh, you know, pr progress in the campaign, but that's how you get a divine vessel. And again, make sure over on your atlas that this is not specced in, because if this is specced in, it will not work properly. So you have to throw in the map, and then you're going to also throw in a divine vessel then you're going to hit activate now it will make the boss harder so i wouldn't recommend rolling uh any extra additional mods on it i mean i could do it it's totally fine but i'm just here to go and show you guys the gameplay there is a delirium we could hit that uh up after i just want to rush to the boss so i can show you guys this thing you don't have to just rush to the boss you can clean up the map it's totally fine but again for the sake of uh making it a little faster we're just going to rush straight to the boss Ooh, we got a uh expedition but you know what, since we, this gives us extra um, flask charges, we can do that. All right, so here is the arena and we will defeat the boss. Just run around the laps with, until he dies. So this boss in particular, he's gonna go away. So we gotta go to the next zone. Not every boss is like this. It's just this one in particular just happens to do it. up and activate oh we got a ritual too nice so go ahead and get this boss down and he is eliminated now we're not done yet so 
What we gotta do then is go back to the map device. We're going to grab out this. You'll see that the difference. See how this one's like blue? And it says captured soul. Now we take this to sin. You can probably activate sin in your hideout, but for the sake of it, I'm just gonna go to act 10 because it's, you only need to do this a couple times anyways. And then we go talk to sin and we will now have that Pantheon unlocked. So now you see where it's in blue, unaffected by burning ground. So burning ground is these little like things on the ground and I recommend most people to get this. The other one that I do like is you can't be blind or maimed. Um, nice little extra effect if you can't uh, be, uh, it's reducing the effect of shock on us. I like this one as well, another great one, uh, but like pick the ones that you want. You know, every character class is gonna maybe want something a little different. You may be, uh, be able to be uh, immune to frozen via another mechanic. So, but just make sure that you are immune to frozen in PoE. It's actually very important but uh, yeah that's how you unlock it um this one is on a uh, plateau and a toll for the map but yeah just google it it'll tell you i recommend cannot be frozen and then also getting the capture the tower light foot which is actually what i'm going to be doing next that one's actually on coral ruin so yeah make sure you get three divine vessels grab the maps that you need um and then go in do them all and and then you can respec if you want to you can respec back into this when you're finished uh, i just happened to, this is like one of the best nodes i think early on to grab but yeah we will spec r right back into it uh, but that's how you capture the souls and get more stuff on your pantheon tree all right, so now that you've seen everything with this video, just keep on doing maps if you need to get the currency. And then again, we're gonna be setting up for these boss fights. So I'm just trying to get you guys prepped to get everything upgraded for these boss fights. But if there's any confusion on anything, definitely let me know down below in the comment section below. But I'm just gonna mouse over some of the stuff that I feel like uh, maybe in case anyone's following the, this as like the entire build guide, you at least have the info uh, for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing the boss fights on the very next one. But thanks for tuning guys. If you enjoyed this, drop a like on your way out and I'll see you guys in the next part when we're gonna fight all these major bosses.